evil creature known as Skinwalker or Wendigo usually dwells in woodlands across America. This creature may appear as a monster with some human characteristics, or as a spirit who possessed a human being and made them monstrous. In any case, tonight is reserved for scary Wendigo encounters. And as always, do smash that like button, subscribe and hit notification bell. It really helps with YouTube algorithm and in growth of this channel. So sit back, relax and now start. I recently moved to South Dakota for work, and last week my co-workers and I decided to drive down to Badlands National Park in an attempt to catch the Aurora Borealis. It didn't end up showing up, unfortunately. We arrived around 8 p.m. and stayed until 1 a.m., so it was pitch black the entire time we were there. Everything was fine until four of us decided to take one of our cars to look at a herd of bison that usually hung out several miles down the road. We didn't end up finding any, save for a couple of stray bulls, but that's besides the point. We ended up turning around to rejoin the others, and on the way back we saw something strange. Well, more accurately, everyone else but me saw it. This is a recurring theme and part of the reason I hesitated to share this story. However, while I cannot back it up myself, multiple people saw the same thing at different times, without discussing it with each other, and their reactions seemed genuine. As we sped over a hill, the other three people in the car with me started freaking out. They started asking each other whether anyone else saw what they saw, and verifying exactly what it was they spotted. They all agreed, a tall, pale pink humanoid figure had sprinted across the road in front of us, almost too fast to see. I was skeptical, and if this had been the only sighting I would honestly have thought nothing of it. The others were still a bit freaked out though, for the entire rest of the drive. Once we'd rejoined the rest of our classmates, things seemed normal for about an hour, we were just hanging out, looking at the stars and enjoying each other's company. However, a car drove down one of the roads near us, and the person next to me stared at the car and went holy shit. What's that? She kept her gaze on it, and relayed it to us afterwards. Please note, we hadn't talked about what we saw in the car once we arrived back at the campsite, she said she had seen the same figure sprinting across the street in front of the other car, and had kept an eye on it in the dark. She also stated it had moved so fast it had traveled down the road in a mere few seconds. At this point, we were all thoroughly creeped out. The people who'd been in the car with me relayed our story about the figure that ran in front of our car. They agreed that they'd seen the same being, and we all kept our eyes out for the rest of the time we were there. I do intend to head back there sometime, against my best instincts, perhaps, to see if I can catch a glimpse of it myself and I'll update this if I ever end up doing so. I used to live on the reservation, pretty much in the middle of no nowhere. The closest house was five miles away so truly. My mom and I were driving home one night and as we were nearing our house we almost hit this massive wolf as it strolled slowly in front of the car, walked across the road, and then glanced at us before walking slowly away into the darkness. It was probably three times the size of a normal wolf. Later on my mom said it was because they released a bunch of Canadian wolves into Yellowstone but it was too massive. It also had really patchy hair like it had mange or something, its joints stuck out at weird sharp angles, its eyes were glowing, not like reflecting light but literally glowing red. It wasn't afraid of the car at all most animals would have at least hustled, this one basically walked lazily away. And then a few days later I was in the kitchen making breakfast. I went to the sink to wash my hands and as I looked out the window into our backfield I saw a man standing a few hundred yards away. He was wearing a pelt over his head and face but I didn't recognize the animal, he was naked and covered in blood splatters. He raised his hand and pointed towards our barn and when I looked it was in flames. We lost an entire litter of piglets, several lambs, and our barn. 
My stepdad ran and trying to get as many animals out as he could and ended up getting serious burns on his back. Anyways when I tried to tell my grandpa about the man and he said there were spirits on our land who couldn't move on because they were murdered and buried there but they weren't evil. He thinks it was just a harmless spirit telling me the barn was on fire but I know what it was something else, something vile and I think they were connected. Do with that what you will. I have some other weird stuff from living out there. When I was 16 years old, I came face to face with a pair of big, bright orange eyes. Whatever it was that I saw seemed to be a large owl, but all I saw was darkness surrounding the eyes. This happened in the middle of the night, at my friend's house, as three of us were returning from sneaking out of the house. I was the last one to climb back in through the first story window of my friend's house. When I turned to close the window something with orange eyes was staring right at me, no more than two feet away. The eye contact between us lasted maybe three seconds, but I'm not sure how the eye contact broke. Whatever it was had a paralyzing effect putting my two friends right to sleep, and putting me to sleep soon after. This was around 10 years ago and I never really put that much deep thought into it until recently. Anyone with any insight is much appreciated. So I made the decision to spend the night in the Sierra Nevada with my girlfriend. I had only ever been there twice, although I had spent my whole childhood fishing and hunting. I've spent a lot of time in the high Sierras across the Icehouse region, but I've never seen any strange or paranormal activity there. I've seen and heard lots of bears, mountain lions, coyotes, and other creatures, but my girlfriend and I were watching a movie that we had downloaded on the laptop the other night when we heard a mountain lion cry. Female mating call, and I don't believe it's a huge deal. It's late, so I get out the flashlight, start shouting, and become loud to frighten it away, I also carry a 9mm. More cries and a roar accompany its reappearance. When I finally got my light on it, it was utterly dead, or, frozen. I fired the tree next to it from about 40 feet away to attempt to frighten it away, but it made not a single move. I then told my girlfriend to open the vehicle and get in. But at that moment, we were unable to locate the keys. In order to assist her with the keys, I shifted the spotlight. It screamed once again, this time around 25 feet away. It continued to scream an inch closer as I fired another bullet. We locate keys and jump I was in the vehicle, but my wallet and phone were both in the tent, so after rounding up some balls to retrieve them, I hopped out and cautiously walked backwards towards the tent, and as soon as I got there, it screamed again. I yelled at it and this time it screamed much closer. So get back in the vehicle. As soon as I did, the mountain lion stopped moving. There were also deer up on the ridge behind us that were untouched by the gunshots, and the bugs didn't stop buzzing. We spent the night in my vehicle in a parking lot. If anybody could help, I'd appreciate it. In addition, a mountain lion that seemed to be healthy was unfazed of gunfire. In all my life, I've never seen an animal that I had to frighten away or flee from the sound of a pistol. Me and my mom go on avid bike rides literally every night we hang out. Not too long ago last weekend she had an encounter, she was riding her bike with her headphones in down a very dark and open area of the trail when she saw movement and heard what sounded like a loud yell. No people camp in that area due to the shrubs being practically non-existent and the trees are dead as well. She described it to me as the most she's ever feared for her life. Now this weekend we were coming back from our nightly ride and I started getting a gut-wrenching feeling while passing a certain place on the trail. I could genuinely feel something watching us. All the hair on my body stood up and just told me to get the hell out of there as quick as possible while she tried to take her sweet time until she saw eyes in the distance. Naturally I look at the tree line just to be cautious and me having the brightest light get the best look at it. 
I can't even describe what I saw all I knew was to get out of there at that moment. Hello. I'm 21 years old and I have a deep feeling and suspect that I have been being hunted by Wendigo slash dogmen ever since I was around 12 years old and I'll go into as deep as I possibly can about the whole backstory and why I think this in a moment here but first I want to explain some things. I've had encounters all my life, all horrible and horrifying, and I even had initially suspected aliens or alien abduction just because it's so hard for someone to wrap their mind around the whole possible existence of cryptids and inhuman beings. So here are the number one things that I experienced during, before and after I have encountered these things or even felt them come near. Burning, raging and powerful fear that grows as I think about the possibility of them being around. Tapping at my windows, scratches at the door as if my dog is trying to get inside but I open it with nothing there to be seen. Feeling like I am not alone or safe in my own home or my mind at certain times, specifically night time, always night time. The fear and the feeling of an entity being around has even caused me at some times in my life to just accept that I had to sleep in the daylight and awake at night so I could be careful and protect myself somehow dreams of them. Not often, but very powerful and vivid nightmares of them. I haven't had one in a long time but usually when I do, it's of me lost in a very dark forest being pursued by something, having one look through my window and just stare at me the whole duration of my dream. For your information when I had this dream of one of these things at my windows, my brother had the same dreams and actually awoke just before me by a very loud and raspy scream he thought came from said window. Yes we woke at relatively the same time in the middle of the night as well as shared somewhat the same dream. Rapid heartbeat and anxiety, stress when thinking or speaking of them like I am now. Waking up with scratches that couldn't have been done by me, aka in places I cannot reach or something like that. Even weird and scary as F light anomalies near my windows. I'll explain as best I can. My bedroom window is facing our backyard which faces a very deep woods that encompasses the whole backyard and sides of the house. So in the middle of the night, it looked as if car headlights or even this very still moving flashlight looking light floating past my window, no bouncing, no shakiness, just this very still, bright calm light that cam through the blinds once or twice as if someone or something walked by or was trying to see inside. I ran out to my mother and father who told me nobody was outside, and they checked for me and there was no sign of anyone or anything. Paranoia. Extreme excessive sweating and extreme feelings of heat, like a fever when the fear sets in or when I feel one near. And now, I'll try my best to tell every story that I have. Please be kind and supportive, because saying all this for the public or even in general is so hard and causes me great fear but I know it may help or I could get some advice or help somehow. So. Here it goes. Alright it all starts around the time I was 9 years old, maybe 10 or 11. Around this time I started to naturally astral project and keep in mind I have always been extremely sensitive to what others cannot see feel or understand and I've always been like this. I remember specifically one week that my family and I had a road trip up to Fergus Falls, we live in Minnesota aka the home of these creatures besides Canada of course, it took about 3 hours to get there, but it was worth it, even as a fidgety kid, I loved when we got there even if it meant such a long period of being cramped and cooped up in a small car. We would go up to visit and stay with my grandparents, in this beautiful cabin that they had a timeshare for a while for, it had this gong-like bell that you'd ring when you got there that was near the parking area and entrance, and after this, there were wood pathways that spanned about 60 feet from the dirt road where you parked to the actual home and the sliding glass doors and everything. It was such a beautiful place, we would always immediately go fish because there were always sunfish that loved the corn we would bait our hooks with usually just throwing them back but sometimes eating them and all that jazz. It was such a soothing and amazing place to be as a child, especially as one that was anxious, abused and bullied. But it always changed at night. One very vivid memory, is this one. 
We had gotten to the cabin, and I was immediately sick as if I had the flu all of a sudden when we got there. I wasn't car sick. We had spaghetti for lunch and I had to lay on the couch while my whole family went out to fish without me. I was in agony. A migraine, nausea, etc. and I had started to get so bad that I stumbled out through the sliding glass door to the deck, leading to the dock where they were fishing. Halfway there, I fell to my knees and threw up all of the noodles I had eaten and yelled for help and they carried me inside, thankfully feeling only kind of better after vomiting. The rest of the night was a huge blur honestly but I started to feel better as time passed. Once nightfall and darkness came, my grandparents actually put in an X-Files VHS and for some reason, no idea why? Like no idea at all, as we watched, for some reason I started to get that burning, aching and debilitating fear come in the pit of my stomach, I think because it was the subject of cryptids and aliens etc that was the first time in my life I had ever felt that kind of fear, never ever in my little life had I felt something like it before. As if I was close to feeling that there was something near, something that I didn't understand and something that the house walls would not protect me from if needed. And sadly, as they got done watching, I was feeling so much dread knowing it was time for bed because I knew I would not be able to sleep for some odd reason, again, as if I knew something was or would watch me when I was in bed. It was so bad that I had to have my mother come sleep with me and even then I could. Not sleep. For the life of me. I remember seeing things but not clearly, through windows and the spotlight windows on the ceiling. That's mostly the end of that one. But I have much more. I'll only tell one more of my stories because telling them is causing me to become numb with anxiety and fear seeping in. I was at my other grandparents home at the time, that I must state that their home is on what used to be Lakota slash Suix land, even adjacent to what is called the Sioux Line Trail. I was living there actually while doing online school and I would have the same. Exact feelings come at night but much worse and more powerful once night came specifically. So, my bedroom door was to my right, closest to the wall I was facing and the bed faced. And right outside my bedroom door, if you took two sharp lefts and walked just a few feet there would be a back door. I thought that in this bout of burning fear, I heard the doorknob rattle or even the door open even if it was locked. Nobody was up, I would have heard and seen them through the angle of my bedroom door. I confirmed it in the morning that nobody was up at that time. This all happened in the span of maybe just one or two minutes. After I thought I heard this occur, I felt a presence right on the other side of that wall, between me and the back door. The fear somehow grew to an amount I couldn't fathom. And then, so slowly, too slowly, I heard what sounded like a large nail being softly and very creepily slowly dragging across that wall. The sound leading as if it was coming towards my bedroom door, and as the sound got closer, I closed my eyes and started to say prayers are loud, crying and almost peeing my pants because of how scared I was that I might see something peeking at me around that damn bedroom door. It stopped once it got to the end of this wall. I didn't see it, after holding my eyes shut, crying and begging God and Jesus to protect me. And I am not religious but this made me that afraid, I never saw it or its face, it left or disappeared. And I somehow fell asleep. No idea how, told myself it was my mind and that it wasn't real, maybe I was sleeping but I knew I wasn't. I have insomnia so I know when I am sleeping and when I'm not. If this gets some attention I will post the rest of my stories and encounters, but until then. I need to stop focusing on these things. Please let me know what you think, any comments or something would help me a lot in feeling less alone and like I'm not crazy. I've had experiences like this happen too much and too often through my life to be just my mind or just anything else. Does my experiences sound valid and concrete? If you e had encounters or heard of people with them, do they have similarities? I just want to feel safe again. Hey folks, 
For years now I've been retelling a childhood experience to various friends to see if anyone has dealt with something similar. When I was probably 10-11 I was playing in a lower pasture on 80 acres of family land situated in the Santa Cruz Mountains in California with a friend and my little brother. Both were around 7 eighths at the time, I remember vividly seeing a man standing just inside the woodline with the head of a stag. Dark, rough fur stopped at the collarbone and it has an enormous rack that resembled somewhat the way tree roots look when they're blown over and pull out of the ground. Its chest was white-skinned, muscular but athletic and it had what I remember looking like stripes painted on it in a dark color. Not stripes like a prison uniform but occasional long marks running down an arm or from front to back. I don't remember exactly what its legs looked like, either covered in the same dark fur or wearing dark pants. Normally I'd chalk it up to childhood fantasy but my little brother and his friends swear they saw it too. Any similar experiences? It seemed more neutral in temperament than aggressive so I'm reluctant to really label it a skinwalker I've also had folks compare it to Kerninos. Me and my family are indigenous Native American, and we had family in Arizona, while visiting them my brother and some older cousins decided to explore the area more. Me being around 6 to 7 at the time of course wanted to join my cool older brother and cousins but they said it was for big kids and I was too young to join them. Around a few hours later we got a frantic call from my brother and cousins telling our mom to come pick them up now and they'll explain later. I wanted to see why mom was hurrying so I tagged along, note we had a van so a lot of people could sit in it. When we got to the meeting point my brother and cousins were all shaking and covered in mud and my mom was mad his brand new white jays were covered in mud. He explained that they went to a construction site and they saw what looked like a teenage girl on one of the sand piles, they started calling to it and suddenly it turned into a shadow and started running away. They chased after it and threw mud at it, it turned into an owl and then flew into a tree. One of my cousins said dude it's a skinwalker. That's when the realization kicked in and everyone scattered and bolted. My mom was even angrier now, saying that they were stupid for wanting to provoke one. Long story short we had to smudge and get out of there quickly. So thanks to my brother our Arizona trip was cut short. Don't know how to start this story, happened to me literally 3 hours ago and I just want to know what I witnessed. I was outside smoking on my porch around 12 am midnight. It was completely silent outside not a single sound, and up in the forest I suddenly hear the trees start to shake like crazy and some seconds after I heard a shriek that was kind of similar to a cat screaming but a lot deeper, there was very little light but I could just make out the trees moving. Then I hear this thing sprinting like crazy on all fours, I could feel and hear the fast steps it took so I assume this thing is really heavy. It ran across the field next to the neighboring house in literally under 2 seconds and it's over 100 meters between us. I'm from Norway and there is some wildlife here but I have never seen or heard something scream or run like this. It was unnaturally fast, it scared the shit out of me. Anybody have any idea what this could have been, I did not see the creature. I have a very close personal friend who has lived within a mile of a Navajo Indian reservation in Utah, and has related the following story to me. His family had been going to visit relatives in another city, and to get there, they drive through a stretch of Indian reserve territory. It was in the early evening, and his mom was riding in the passenger seat asleep, as were most of the rest of his family, he actually thought they all were asleep, while he drove. Out of the corner of his eye, he caught motion coming from the driver's side shoulder of the road, and what he saw startled him to say the least. It was about 5 feet 11 to 6 feet 2, naked, and hairless. It was keeping pace with him, approximately 45 miles per hour, and seemed to exude a sense of hatred towards them. He floored the van, 97 Chevy Astro van all-wheel drive extended and quickly went to about 100 miles an hour. The skinwalker kept up with him until about 60, 
and then simply stopped running. He didn't mention this to his family seeing as how they might think he was crazy, until his younger sister, seven-ish, mentioned the same thing to him and his mom. She described it accurate to his memory, and even described how he, her brother, had sped up to get away from it. Their mother told her it was just a dream, and not to worry. My friend knows it wasn't a dream, and knows he isn't crazy. According to what I can find, a skinwalker is essentially nothing more than a witch doctor slash medicine man gone evil, and as such are attributed all sorts of mystical powers and abilities. However, they need the skin of an animal to get their abilities. He heard stories from some of the Navajos at high school of skinwalkers that were smooth-skinned, hairless and exist simply to cause pain. I was wondering if anyone has any more stories, doesn't matter how far removed from the source they are, about these smooth skinwalkers. I was in the woods with one of my friends and we were just playing tag and everything like that. We saw a huge rock so we walked over and sat on it and when I looked down I saw two little carvings, they were really cool so I handed one to my friend and that when we hear a grunt. Me and my friend turned around to see a dog, I am a huge dog lover so I called it over, but that's when I looked at its eyes I was in horror, they're looking right at me was the biggest eyes in the world I screamed and the dog just lay there on the ground looking at me. Let me explain what I am talking about the biggest eyes. Go to a bathroom mirror and try to open your eyes as big as you can, that's what the eyes look like. Me and my friend still had the little carved people I was holding it as tight as I can and when I moved it the dog got up but not on four legs just two, it moved back and forth like it had a hard time keeping upright, me and my friend were petrified with fear. The thing then says something and runs I mean runs like a human but the thing it said was this, not food. Even since then my mom and dad won't let me in the woods and what they told me next made me never even want to go in there here as their little pep talked. Honey what you saw was something called a skinwalker, they kill their beloved ones and turn into a monster, they can turn into any animal they want but to know how to know is their eyes. They will always have huge eyes looking at you. They then gave me the little craved person and told me to keep it with me until I moved out. I am still with my mother and father and I have to carry the little carved person with me because it will keep me safe if I don't. My boyfriend and I recently went camping at Red River Gorge in Kentucky. Our first night we were there, we were hanging out in our tent, when all of a sudden we starting hear this really weird noise. It was really loud and almost sounded like someone humming but in pain at the same time. It had recently rained really hard and a lot of places were flooded so there wasn't many people camping that night and not to mention we were pretty deep in the woods so I don't think it was an actual person. Fast forward to us sleeping, I thought I was dreaming that someone or something was outside our tent trying to get in. The next night my boyfriend asked me if I remember waking him up to tell him someone was outside of the tent. I don't, but he heard what sounded like a fingernail being run across the tent. I wish I would have recorded the noise that his was making but I was so terrified I didn't even think about it. My boyfriend just thinks it was a coyote but I've heard plenty of coyotes in my lifetime and I've never heard them sound like that. It sounded like so much like a person but in a weird way as if it was a recording. Last week my fiancé, and I were out looking at the meteor shower out on a really secluded dirt road. We heard a very strange snort and then a human voice say hey needless to say we got the f out of there ASAP. The rest of the night I kept having shivers go up my spine. About another week goes by without anything happening, so last night I decided to out fishing with a few friends. We were out there for probably about an hour drinking and having fun when my one buddy said he swears he heard somebody cough across the river. We were on private property pretty deep into some woods so no one should have been around, we kinda just ignored it and continued doing what we're doing since he's the only one that heard it. Then we heard a branch snap like it was stepped on, but it had to have been a fairly thick branch because it got all of our attention real quick. 
After that one of my buddies claims to have seen two bright white lights up in a tree and he said when he looked into it he immediately started tearing up and felt uncomfortable. We also just had this really uncomfortable feeling that I can't really describe. Sorry for all the errors and mistakes beforehand I wrote this quickly on my phone, I just need to some insight. So living in a small town, central Pennsylvania, I drive around with friends quite a bit to pass time. Tonight a group of friends and I were driving around when one of them needed to go home due to an emergency. We took her back to her car, which was parked at a local softball field, and since it was dark I decided to park my car facing hers and leave my headlights on to make sure she could see to get in her car. While we're sitting in my car waiting, the four of us who were still hanging out simultaneously spot a light, it looked like a large flashlight, moving between the fences of the two fields. I was worried it was a random person, which is still scary nonetheless, so I beeped my horn and motioned for my friend to leave, which she started backing out so I drove back up to the main road. When we turned onto the road we realized she was stopped in the parking lot, now facing sort of diagonally towards the road. Given what we just saw I stopped the car to watch her leave to make sure she got out of there okay, and when we looked towards her car, once again all four of us in my car saw what looked like two figures walking right in front of her car. They were tall, skinny, and none of us recall being able to make out full bodies, only something vaguely human-like. Right as the figures walk out of the headlights, our friend continues to back her car up, and she swings her lights in the direction that the figures walked. It couldn't have taken more than a second for her to back up, but the figures were gone. We called her and got her to meet us a few miles down the road at a store and we asked her if she saw the same thing, and she saw absolutely nothing. I'm not sure if it was ghosts or what it was, but I'm very creeped out. I think it's worth mentioning that said friends were cracking jokes about skinwalkers all night which I am aware that you are not supposed to mention them. When I was about 8 years old, I used to take a bus to school at around 6 in the morning, and there was a forest nearby that my parents, my dog, and I were all familiar with. It wasn't difficult to memorize, but when I was about 11 months old, I was looking at the forest as usual, it was cold, and I thought I saw something white in the entrance to the forest. However, it didn't move, instead, it just looked at me and howled. It just made a high-pitched sound before disappearing, I haven't seen it again. My friend and I have never experienced something like this before in our entire lives. Recently, my mom had to go to an old high school friend's birthday party. It was convenient for us to go because a family friend has a farmhouse we could stay at in central Florida. My mom didn't feel comfortable going alone because the farmhouse can be really creepy at night due to the lack of light on the property and it just being in the middle of nowhere. So, I told my mom I would go with her as long as I could bring a friend. We get to the property and it is a huge 52-acre plot of land with cows, horses, and open fields with a tree line surrounding the land. We looked on a map to see exactly where we were and saw we were right next to two Native American forests. We unpacked our stuff and were able to check all of the property out because the owner had a golf cart type ATV. My friend saw a TikTok talking about skinwalkers and their Native American name and we didn't know any better so we were talking about them all day on all parts of the property. Later that night we saw a video talking about how even saying their name could provoke them to come. We immediately got kind of scared because we found out the party my mom was going to would be an hour away and we would be in the farmhouse at night all alone. As the sun started to set we quickly noticed that none of the windows on all four walls of the house had curtains. With the lights on in the house, you could only see your reflection from the inside but could see right in from the outside. As I said, the property had little to no light but some floodlights were motion activated on the back porch of the farmhouse. Just a quick description of the farmhouse, 
It was a one bedroom, one bathroom house with a little living room and a kitchen. There were two doors, one leading out to the fields in the back and the other was directly attached to the horse stables which was more of a lounging area as there were tables and a bar with a giant flat screen. Okay so now we can get into the scary part of the night, my friend was putting away our dinner in the fridge and I went outside to smoke. As soon as I walked up to the table in the horse stable I heard something really close to me and ran back inside. As soon as I came back inside my friend asked if I knocked on the window. Of course, I had said no but my friend found that hard to believe as she definitely heard a distinct knocking at the window. This window is important to the story because the floodlights were right outside of it. I forgot to mention we had brought our dog and she was fine the entire day until it became dark out. When my friend and I were both inside we just brushed it off until the floodlight outside the window turned on and my dog bolted to see who was there. My dog sat there and barked at the window but when we went to go check there was nothing there. No both of us really needed a cigarette so we both decided to go outside and give it one more try. My friend stepped outside and looked to her right, I was confused and told her we should stay in the stable so we walked to a table. As soon as we sat down there were another two knocks on the other side of the building. We got up and sprinted towards the house where we locked ourselves in and where my friend told me she heard whispering coming from the right as soon as we stepped out of the house. At this point, we were really freaked out and the dog had begun to start barking at the same window again where the light turned on once again to nothing there. The only comfort we could get at this time was calling my friend's parents and some of our friends. However, after a short 10 minutes of us talking to people our service cut out and both of our calls failed. We couldn't text anyone either and this really scared us because we hadn't had a problem with our service the entire day. We once again tried to relax and put on a movie but that's when we heard something jump on the roof and walk above the room we were in. My friend and I immediately leapt up and ran to the bathroom, we didn't know what to do but at this point, I thought our best bet was to run to the car, which was at least 40 feet away, and get off the property until my mom and the owner could come back. We grabbed our stuff still hearing whatever was on the roof walk around to where we moved in the house. As soon as we got to the door my friend pushed me and said listen which is when we heard two knocks right at the door we were standing in front of. It then ran towards the back of the house where all of the floodlights on the back porch went on. The dog was going crazy and my friend and I were on the verge of tears. I told her we had to run to the car and get out of there which we did. As we were running we could hear something on the roof of the stables almost as if it was following us to the car. We sped off and sat at a parking lot two miles away for two hours until my mom and her friend returned to the property. They escorted us back in and as we were all walking through the stables to get to the door of the house there was another knocking in the stable. The owner said she heard it and went to go check what it was but saw nothing. Something my friend and I had noticed was that the sounds of the crickets were back again. When we left the house earlier that night there wasn't a sound that could be heard other than whatever was on the roof. My mom ended up sleeping there at the house but my friend and I were traumatized. We felt as though the farmhouse was peaceful again as soon we got back cause we didn't feel any of the negative energy we were feeling earlier that night. We were too scared to even sleep so we both sat in the bathroom on the floor apologizing for whatever we might have offended. We honestly don't know what this could have been but we don't want this post to get taken down for it being framed as a question. We have come to a conclusion of our own on what it was but thought it would be interesting to hear other people's thoughts. I live in the home state for skinwalkers. Utah is a beautiful state with ever-changing landscapes and adventures to be experienced. Recently, I stayed at my great-grandfather's cabin near Oakley. He built it on a ranch next to a beautiful forest. A couple of days ago I went out to the spring to refill our drinking water. It was around 11 pm. As I was walking along the road with my flashlight, I noticed deer laying down in the middle of the road, its legs were flayed outwards, almost like it was a rug. Its eyes were a glowing white and it stared at me for what felt like around 5 minutes. 
I physically couldn't move or look away, it was almost like it had some weird energy to it. I got these horrible chills. They weren't anything like those chills you sometimes get down your spine. My entire body was pulsing. The deer bolted off and I lost the chills and went through a shortcut to the spring. I was walking back when another deer was standing upright on its hind legs. It was standing up. I tried to run but it was like when you try to run in a dream. No matter how hard I tried, I wouldn't go anywhere. I must have blacked out because I was laying down on the dirt road with a horrible headache and a nasty smell in the air. I returned to the cabin and I didn't speak of anything that happened that night for the remaining time I was there. First off, I live in the sticks. Anything that isn't road or yard is just trees, plus at certain seasons deer are about as common to see as clouds. When I was around 11 years old during the autumn I decided to take a walk beyond the fence of my backyard. There used to be a paved road there that has since broken up and is almost overtaken by grass and other plants. Being a kid, I picked up a stick and poked stuff on the ground with it. I walked for around a minute with my head to the ground before I felt the body heat of something else. Somehow I was so distracted I didn't notice at all that I was in front of a fully grown buck, but something is different about this buck. Most deers run away at the sight of almost any human, but it didn't run away here it just stood and looked down at me. I looked to the side to see if there were any more deer to its sides to see if it was protecting its family. My mind might have been playing tricks with me in the tenseness of the moment, but I remember seeing a makeshift sort of fence out of vines as if something was trying to replicate the wire fence in the front with branches and vines. I looked back at the deer, or whatever it was, and felt its breath on me. I dropped my stick and ran all the way to my room, I didn't see if it was chasing me, I didn't stop to close the gate, I just ran. I don't know if it tried to chase me, but it definitely didn't go past the fence because I would have seen it from my room's window. I have not had a significant encounter with a deer since then and I have not explored the forest again to look for the fence. This story does not have perfect proof that I encountered a skinwalker that day, but it is still strange to me that an animal barely reacted to my presence. I have heard of them before, but it's never something that I have came across until now. I believe in spirituality and I can sense ghosts and other beings. I usually never seen anything other than ghosts and I try not to think of them for the most part as the more you engage in these types of contacts the more you get signs from these spiritual beings. Keep in mind I am still young and I am yet to experience a lot more in this world but this was something different. So this whole thing happened to me a couple of days ago. I was extremely anxious and angry due to a fight with my SO and I wanted to get out and have a bike around my area. I am based in the UK and I never thought I would see what I saw. First of all, I got off my bike, I was pretty out of breath and crying, and as I was walking, the bushes next to me started rattling and I sensed a quick movement towards me, so I hopped on my bike and drove away like never before. This couldn't have been a person as the bush is thick and if someone would have moved inside I would have heard at least a ouch as it is full of spikes and it would have been someone taller than me, which in my area is really uncommon. I am 5 feet 8. I called up a friend, he reassured me that I was fine and I eventually calmed down and he had to go back to work so we hung up and made my way home. However I heard rattling again, this time I was approximately 500 meters. 2,000 feet away from the other location. I looked inside the wooded area and first I saw nothing but I was sweating and I felt this uncomfortable feeling in my head. When I took a second glance by the very first tree branch it was there. It was extremely tall I would say almost twice the size of me, leaning onto the tree. I made eye contact? The skinwalker didn't have any distinguished features, and I heard this weird buzzing sound. So I got on my bike yet again and this time I got home within minutes, but usually from that area it would take me about 15 minutes to get home. At this point of time, I am extremely confused. I taught these being were native to North American. 
For all I know it wasn't something I ever seen before or felt before. Ghosts or harmful beings usually come with intention and I feel those whether it's good or bad and based on that knowledge I can send them away. But this felt extremely different. I have tried to look for more explanation on what it means to see a skinwalker, what are its intentions or why is it even here? Maybe someone could give me these answers here? Or maybe if it wasn't a skinwalker, someone could point me in the right direction? To finish off my last year of high school, I had to go to a school which was located about 10 to 15 miles away from the nearest town in Durango, Colorado. It was a boarding school and I lived there with about 30 other students and teachers. When I first got there I had never heard the term skinwalker until one of my classmates mentioned it, so I got curious and looked it up. Google made it seem like a skinwalker was just some mere joke saying it's a magical transforming creature so we would always say watch out for the skinwalkers. And nobody really took it seriously. The campus was huge, probably about 20 to 30 acres of land next to a river. About two weeks after I got there I was walking around the campus and noticed an Indian burial ground about 75 feet away from my cabin there was about 20 cabins at the whole place and each could only fit two people to live in. One night my roommate and I were up around midnight playing Call of Duty and such when we started hearing sounds of some very large animal full force sprinting into the back of our cabin multiple times, and we were freaked the F out. Our school didn't allow guns so we had no choice but to and double lock the door and close the shades. Even the night security guard came by because he thought we were walking around outside and causing a havoc at 12 am he came by about every hour to check on everyone and make sure everything was fine, he was a cool guy though. He told us he was convinced we were outside but after we told him what happened and after he saw that both of our faces were pale white, he sort of believed us. Weird shit like this would continue to happen about once or twice a week after that for about two months, whether it was random scratches we heard on our window, or a whole bunch of lights in the middle of the field that we would see in the distance through our window, screams, whistles, etc. The people in the neighboring cabins and I would always talk about similar experiences but stopped shortly after a native that went to the school told us talking about skinwalkers, attracts them. It was getting to the point where I had no choice but to tell someone. I decided to have a meeting with my principal and talk to him about it on behalf of everyone there. What he said freaked me out. He told me back in 2010 he was working late at this school one night and as he walked out of his office, he saw someone sprinting into the cafeteria, ripping papers off the wall as it ran by he thought it was a student. He chased whatever it was into the cafeteria which was a one way in, one way out. Only one door. As he got into the cafeteria and turned the lights on, there was nobody there. My roommate dropped out of school about halfway through the year because of this and I couldn't find anyone else to live with in that cabin so I was forced to listen to shit like this all alone for months on end. It was absolutely messed up, I was on the verge of dropping out, but I couldn't cause I was so close to finishing my senior year. About three quarters through the year, our school had a quarterly thing where we go on a week-long hiking trip somewhere around the country, there was five different groups, and my group was going on a hike up Humphreys Peak in Arizona. We camped the whole way back to Colorado. It was a six-hour drive to Humphreys Peak, and the hike took most of the day. First night was not bad, and I wasn't thinking of any skinwalker shit as I haven't been bothered by them for weeks at this point. The next day we spend most of the day driving slash hiking to the next camp spot, which is a random place in the middle of the desert. Five or six miles down a trail, as we set up our hammocks and start to relax, an older aged woman in a bikini appears from behind a hill we were all at. It was very unsettling as I noticed she didn't have a water bottle, backpack or anything six miles into this trail. She proceeds to start talking to one of my teachers, and she says she knows this place well and can show him around. They start walking and everyone couldn't help but notice her walk. It was like she broke both her knees and was limping. But not limping. I can't even describe how weird of a walk she had. 
A couple minutes go by and my teacher returns without her, and he walks by everyone and goes straight into his tent. I didn't think too much of it but thought her walk was kind of weird. Here's where it gets interesting, third day we finally get to Tucker Flat, after a long day of driving, and another long hike into the desert we end up on a giant rock and decide to camp there. We are in the dead middle of nowhere. It's getting dark so we have a fire, make food and shortly after go to bed, too bad I didn't sleep at all the whole night. I spent most of the night staring at the top of my tent as from what happened the night before, still thinking about that creepy old lady. It was at about 10 or 11 when we started hearing some noises that sounded like rustling at first, and then those rustles turned into footsteps, and then back into small rustles again. As my roommate and I both hear it getting closer and closer to our tent I whisper you hear that? Nearly shitting myself hoping it wouldn't hear us. He didn't answer me, so I looked over at him, and he was staring at me dead in the eyes bugging out with his knife in his hand. I grabbed mine too next to me and slowly put it to my chest. I knew what we had to do, but I didn't know if I had the balls to do it. The footsteps finally stopped. I got a sense of relief and decided it was a perfect time to open the tent and check out what was making all that noise. As I open up my side of the tent, I am greeted by a pair of eyes staring right back at me from less than a foot away. What was it? A black cat in the dead middle of the desert. At this point there was two scenarios going through my head, what the f and what the f. When my tent mate peeks his head and sees the cat, his jaw drops. How the F is a cat 5 miles into a hiking trail in the dead middle of the desert. At 11 PM? We were stumped and decided walking back to the trailhead and getting in the van was our safest bet. So we ended up walking the whole 5 to 6 mile hike back at 11 PM and slept in the van. The whole time we heard rustling behind us and whenever we used our flash, there were a pair of eyes looking at us from a distance. I ended up reading all sorts of information about skinwalkers, and a shiver went down my spine as I read that skinwalkers often turn into a small dog or cat to trick whoever they're messing with. This school was by far the most messed place I've had to live at and I thank God every day that I do not live there anymore. This is just one of the experiences I've had and it only got worse throughout the year. If you want to avoid all this shit happening to you, just don't say the word skinwalker. I'm Mexican 42, I've been reading some stories about American skinwalkers, and I realized, either skinwalkers are different in Mexico or you guys don't know nothing about them. Legends and documents have told us skinwalkers had much to do with the Mexico slash Aztec Empire Foundation. But in general SWs are people with the ability to turn into animal shape, it isn't clear how exactly, but there is more than one way to do it according to stories I've heard, and has nothing to do with the devil and such. In Mexico, we call them by the name they were given, Nahuales, and they can transform into a wide variety of animals as early as four years old, such as snake, skunk, squirrel, turkey, pig, cat, dog, armadillo, horse, bull, these animals are the most common among Mexican skinwalkers, at least the one stories I know. Having an encounter with a Nawal is having a paranormal encounter, you get the same feeling. Nawales are nocturnal 100% and if they still in animal mode when the sun rise up, they die, usually in their beds. Only men can be Nawales, women don't have the energy compatibility to do so, women have a different gift. Depending on age, practice, lineage, and other qualities, is your primary animal you can transform into. If you ever have an encounter with a Nawal, your life can be in danger. Nawales are after something all the time, working they say. Nawales work on watching over the land, the cattle or herd, stalking the girls, scaring the other men or possibly opponents or they are just after enemies, stealing other people's stuff and most of the time they are just dicks. That's the reason I think Mexican Nawales and American slash Canadian skinwalkers are different. Thanks for bearing with me.
So last night I apparently had a dream about a skinwalker. A little backstory is that last week I was job site sitting for a house I'm building while the owners were away. And sleeping on site while working on the house. During that time I had two severe panic attacks, then last night had the dream. So the dream plays out as one of my girlfriend's dogs who loves me was attacking me like crazy and I couldn't get him to stop. Then I realized her other dog was barking towards the outside of the building on the job site. When I looked out, there was a deer that I scared off to appease the one dog. Then the first dog continued to attack me and I realized that the deer was coming back, except upon further review, something was off. I realized I could see into its skull and it looked like a red, human face with glowing red eyes was in it. I screamed, hey, is there a person in there? Is there a person in there? Then I woke feeling like I had been screaming and had another panic attack. I thought it was just a weird dream about her dog attacking me and leading to a panic attack so I told it to her in passing because she knows about my panic attacks and tries to help with them. She asked, what was he attacking you for? So I proceeded to tell her the dream. What really creeps me out is I had really never heard of them before especially the mythology behind them. I had heard the name because I watched Skinwalker Ranch with her but I passed it off as a hoax. She went on to show me pictures and some of them looked exactly like what I saw. She then told me of the mythology around them especially how they show themselves specifically to people with Native American ties. So I told her that my dad used to take me to powwows when I was a kid because I have a very small amount of US Aboriginal blood from his side of the family. Moral of the story is I'm freaked out after doing research and wondering if this community has any advice. Me and my 15-year-old daughter were driving over to a friend of hers house a little after 8 Monday night and something passed in front of the car. It looked real. My daughter said it was gray, I say it was black but it was very muscular, it was the size of a large pit bull with broad shoulders. The arm sockets looked human but the rest didn't. It had a round head. It used its front paws to run. It would push off the ground with them and they would go towards its sides and the back legs would come up and they would kind of tuck in underneath it. I know how weird it sounds. I wonder if it was a panther. It was still daylight. I thought it looked strange but I didn't want to alarm my daughter so I didn't say anything. It went beside an abandoned house on a road that runs perpendicular to the road that my home is on. She said, Mama, that wasn't a dog. I replied to her I thought the same thing, I just didn't want to say it. It ran really fast and it looked solid. I have no idea what it could be but we were talking about skin pedestrians quite a lot Sunday night. I heard that was bad luck. Who knows? I know how crazy that sounds. I'm gonna try to make this as short as possible. But, for context, in my bedroom I have this attic door behind my bed, and the attic itself always gives me this uneasy feeling like something's in there, especially at night, and sometimes I can hear scratching noises or noises of stuff falling in there, this never happens in the daytime though. Anyways onto the dream, tonight I had this dream and I can remember it quite vividly, it started off like any other dream I was sitting by my desk just drawing or writing I can't exactly remember, but then, remember the attic door I mentioned earlier? That door opened slightly by itself, at first I thought it might be my cat since she always goes hunting for mice and other things in the attic but then a bunny came out of there instead. For some reason, I didn't think much of it at first, but the more I looked at it the stranger I found it to be. Firstly, it didn't have any hair, on its body, like, it was straight up bald, secondly, the skin texture looked a whole lot like human skin, now, I'm not an animal expert, but it looked nothing like animal skin, third red flag was, its eyes were completely black, and it wouldn't be a red flag if they were normal black, since most animals do have plain black eyes, but no, they were pitch black, like two black holes, not reflecting light or anything, 
Now this thing was standing light in front of my lamp so if the eyes were supposed to reflect light, the reflection would definitely be there. In the dream I remembered just staring at the thing blankly while it stared back at me. Now, what I didn't realize while I was staring at it, that its head was slowly morphing into a human head, I only realized after I snapped out of it and looked back at it, noticing that its head now resembled an expressionless human female, her eyes were still pitch black and her body was still of a bunny but her head was completely different, she still had a blank expression and was staring at me endlessly. At that point in my dream I remember being scared shitless, I literally sprinted out of the room and all the three floors downstairs like my life depended on it. Once I was there, I immediately ran to my dad and told him what had happened, hoping that he'd at least take my story into consideration, since whenever I tell him something weird like this, he always turns to me and asks me to show him, however in the dream, he didn't even look up at me, he just told me to stop being stupid and go back upstairs, which caught me a bit off guard. Anyways, I obeyed and started walking back upstairs, thinking that maybe if I go back and take a picture of that thing and show him then he'll believe me. As I was walking upstairs I saw a shadow walking towards the stairs, bear in mind I couldn't yet see who the person was because of how my house is built, I didn't think much of the shadow at first, thinking that it was just my brother or sister coming down, but as I saw the person, I remember my heart literally stopping for a few moments. At the top of the stairs, was the same girl, now in her human form, standing like a ragdoll, still staring at me blankly with the same expression, except her eyes were no longer pitch black, they were like human eyes, or should I say, they were trying to be like human eyes, by that I mean, they were just like our eyes, but stretched inhumanly wide, and lacking any type of sparkle or self, they just looked dead, it was like there was nobody in those eyes, no soul, no living being. It was at this point that I woke up, the image of the feminine entity still in my head. It wasn't that scary back when I woke up, but writing about it now makes me realize, that dream was horrifying. Now, after reading all of that, can someone please tell me if there's any logical explanation for this? I really don't want to think that skinwalkers or other entities are after me but after that dream, I'm not sure what else to think. I don't know, maybe it my irrational fear of my attic and the slight fear of skinwalkers that I've developed as I've been researching them a bit these last few weeks, mixed with subconscious playing tricks on me but at this point I'm really not sure, so please, can someone at least try to give me a logical explanation for this, because I really don't want to believe that I'm in the process of getting possessed by something lol, I just need reassurance. Edit. By the way I live in the UK, and, as of now, there's been barely any sightings of skinwalkers, that's what makes me doubt that it might have been a skinwalker, I'm not sure though to be honest. Edit 2, now, I know some of y'all might be thinking is this bitch really soiling their pants because they had a nightmare? And I get it, I'd be thinking the same, but, the only reason I'm making this post, is because I have this thing, where when I have dreams, Half the time those dreams are actually visions of the future. What I mean by this is, half the time, my dreams end up happening in real life like a few weeks or months later, especially when they don't seem that far-fetched, so that's my only concern lol, just wanted to clear that up.